Hey guys, welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're looking at this game of pool here, in which we only know the initial velocity at which this ball A here is coming in and at an angle at 45 degrees. And what we're trying to find out is actually the velocity A, B, and C. So only with this one piece of information, and then obviously with the angles, we're able to determine the velocity A, B, and C. This is quite uh, remarkable. So let's read problem statement. In a game of pool, ball A is moving with a velocity V0, of magnitude v0 equals 5 meters per second, when it strikes ball B and C, which are at rest in a line as shown. Knowing that after the collision, the three balls move in the direction indicated and assuming frictionless surface and perfectly elastic impact, that is, no energy is lost, determine the magnitude of velocities vA, vB, and vC. So let's start by actually decomposing the different velocities according to the angles, because v0 is coming in at a 45 degree angle and we can decompose it into a v not on the x direction and a v not on the y direction, right? And we're going to do that for all the balls that have an angle to them. Because you can see that v a, after it hits b and c, it goes upward, so there's no uh, horizontal component to v a. So ball a only goes vertically upwards. By the way, speaking of upwards, let's make sure that we're defining what we're going to be considering positive and the directions we're considering positive in this problem so that we're not confusing ourselves later on. Cool. So let me decompose. So that was a v naught, v naught. So let's decompose now vp. So we're going to have vbx down here. And we're also going to have, probably he makes more sense to do like this, vby here. And over here, we're going to have our, oops, vcx in the x direction. And we also have our v, c, y in the y direction. Now to solve this, what we're going to be using is the conservation of linear momentum. Okay? We're going to take advantage that we have two different uh, components for momentum. So we have the vertical component and the horizontal component. Each of these are going, is going to give us one equation. Okay, So let's start by writing down the conservation of momentum, of linear momentum. It says that whatever the momentum that we had, let's just do LM for linear momentum, whatever linear momentum we had before and after has to be the same because we're respecting, this is a perfectly elastic impact and it's a frictionless surface. So that means that we're not losing, you know, that we're not losing any energy to the, the friction between the balls and the table and all that thing, right? So before, what we have before and what we have afterwards. Before, because everything is at rest, or let me rephrase that, because ball B and ball C are at rest when A is coming at them, before, the only thing we have before is the momentum of ball A. And that is the mass of ball A times velocity of ball A, which is V0, right, the 5 meters per second. And then afterwards, what we have is the mass of ball A times its new acquired velocity, plus the mass of ball B times its new acquired velocity, and the mass of ball C times its new acquired velocity. And if we were to do just this, that would be perfectly fine, but that only gives us one equation. We actually want to have more equations to be able to solve this. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this into two, and we're going to consider the vertical and the horizontal directions. So let me go back to green on this one here. And we're going to do um, the vertical. So let's do vertical. And that's the y. And we're also going to do horizontal, and that's the x. <clears throat> so what do we have before and after on both situations? Well, before, what we have on the uh, x direction, on horizontal direction, is the mass of a that didn't change times v naught x, right? So the component x of v naught. And afterwards, what we have is the mass of b times this component here, and the mass of c times this component here. So only, only those two guys, because a has no horizontal component whatsoever. So that does not concern it. So that means that over here, we're going to have the mass of b times velocity b on the x direction, plus the mass of c times times the velocity c on the x direction. Cool. What about this um, other one here? Same thing. In the beginning, we have mass of a, v naught y, the y direction, the vertical direction. And then afterwards, we're going to have the mass of a, again, uh, the new acquired velocity a, which is y or same thing, right? If, if the, here is a y or not, doesn't matter because it's the same thing. Uh, plus the mass of, what else do we have going upwards? We have vcy, so plus vcy minus vby, right? Because b is going on the negative direction according to what we determined in the beginning. Okay, so this, we have a momentum upwards here and we have a downward momentum here. So that means that plus vcy minus mass of v, vby. Cool, so note that we went from this single equation into these two here. 
okay, because we split the linear momentum into the vertical component and the horizontal component. Okay, so that means that we have now all the masses as unknowns and the velocities as unknowns, except for these two guys. Oops, except for these two guys that we know. It's five, and we know how to decompose them. So one thing to know is because this is a billiard game, that means that all the masses are the same, right? At least theoretically. So that means that <clears throat> the mass of A equals mass of B, which equals mass of C. And then because of that, we can further write this just as velocity v not x equals vbx plus vcx. And over here, with the proper color, we have voy equals vay, which is the same thing as va, plus vcy minus v, b, y. And that facilitates things a bit for us because now we eliminated one of the unknowns. We're not really interested in knowing what the masses are, just the velocities. But you'll be quick to note that we have one, two, three unknowns, being the velocities. Actually, if we're being um, literal here, we actually have five unknowns, but we can relate any v, b, and v, y with the angles here. So let's go ahead and do that, just for the sake of it, since we're here. How can we do this? Well, we know this the sine of 30 is going to be this guy over this guy. So that means that sine of 30 Celsius equals VCY over VC. Remember, VC is what we're trying to find out. What about this guy here? Well, the cosine is going to be this one times this one. So the cosine of 30 degrees equals VCX divided by VC. What else? This guy here. Well, the sine of 30, so the sine of this angle here, is this over this. So sine of 30, sine of 30 equals v b x divided by v b and the cosine of this angle is this this guy here over this probably in hindsight you probably have put this one here well, let's change anything just for the sake of knowing what we're doing okay cool so cosine of 30 degrees is v b uh y divided by v b brilliant and then obviously uh on the very left corner here, let me go back to our original purplish. So we have the 45 degree angle here. So that means that this is also 45 degree angle here. So then 45 degree, if the sine is gonna be the y over the v naught and cosine is vx over v naught. So let's just make sure we're writing that down. Sine of 45 equals v naught over v naught and the cosine of 45 is vyx over v naught. Okay, so because these two sine of 45 and cosine of 45 are the same, that means that my voy and my vox are the same as well, right? So that means that now, okay, considering that we can substitute this back, we actually have less unknowns than it might look at first glance. So let's go ahead and substitute things here. So this, this is going to be the cosine of 45 degrees, vo times v naught. Okay, so I'm substituting where I have vox by v relationship we just found, where we had VBX, where's my VB? <coughs> Sine of 30 times VB is VBX. And then cosine of 30 as well is VC. Just double check that. Yeah, VC, X, cool. Cosine of 30. And over here, my sine of 45 degrees times v naught, and then here we just have v y. Don't have to decompose it to, into anything because v a and v y are the same. So I can write this this way, probably best. Plus, uh, what do we have for sine of 30 v c minus the cosine of 30 v b. Cool. So now. Like I said, now we have two equations. So this would be my equation one, maybe. And then this would be my equation two. And we have three unknowns. So my unknowns are VA, VC, VB, VB, VC. Right? So those are the three unknowns that I have. So in order to solve this, I need an extra equation. I won't be able to solve it just with these two guys here. And the equation I'm going to use is the conservation of energy. Because the problem actually gives you a hint in that regard, right? It actually says not losing any energy because we have a perfectly elastic impact. So therefore, I can assume that my change in kinetic energy is nil. No, I don't have any change of kinetic energy. In other words, whatever kinetic energy I had coming in from A, it has to be now dispersed between these three guys here. Between these three guys here. So how can I write that down mathematically? Well, the um, mass of A times original velocity over 2 
will be equal to the mass of A times its new velocity, over 2, plus the mass of B times its new velocity, squared over 2, plus the uh, mass of C times its new velocity, squared over 2. Well, I have two in every single one of my components. I can eliminate that. And the masses, because, again, of this, I can eliminate them too, as long as my mass is not 0. So that means that v naught squared equals vA squared plus vb squared oops, plus vc squared. And that is our third equation. Copy that. That we can put here with these two. And then we can solve this. Now, so from this point onwards, it's just algebra. Okay, so I'll fast forward here and then we can solve it, see what the answer is. Okay, so we simplify it down to here, and then you can send this one dividing, oh, sorry, subtracting, so you eliminate this guy here, you end up with the idea that um, square root of v2 v0 va equals 2 va squared. So therefore, as long as va is different than 0, we can divide everything with va. So we get the va is square root of 2 divided by 2 times v0. Cool, so that means that 5 times square root of 2 over 2 is my VA, and that is 3.5355, and that is meters per second, and that is positive, so according to what we decided in the beginning, that means that this is upwards, which is good, because A is indeed going upwards as we saw from the beginning. What we do now with this value is, take this guy here and we go back to VC, that was only in terms of VA and V not, and then when we when we have VA, we plug this number, and we have not, we plug five, and then this VC VC equals three point oh six meters per second. Again, positive. Again, this means VC is going in this direction here, and this direction here. Right, put the positive ones. Again, we, we could decompose this into Vx and Vy, and then they'll, they'll both be positive. And then for Vp, what we need to do is exactly the same thing. We're going to plug in this number over here, and we have not. we know this is 5, so we're going to be plugging 5 here. And then this turns out to be uh, 1.77 meters per second. But Vp is not, um, Vp is going on the positive direction on this axis here, and it's going downwards on the y-axis, if I'm not mistaken, or is it? Yeah, so vp is going to have a negative component, which is my v or x. Everything else is going to be positive because it's on the positive direction. Cool, so that does it for this problem, because now we found out um, a, that's the answer for problem. So this is the velocity that a comes out at. This is the velocity that b comes out at. And this is the velocity that c comes out at. So the, I think that the hardest thing on this problem is actually the, the algebra, solving the algebra. Particularly, one step here that took, that took a while was uh, to actually hit, put square these guys here. These, are, these two are squared, right? So squaring these guys here took a while because you have to obviously do um, the square of the square of the whole thing, and then it's going to be the square of this one minus the two times the square of this times this, and then the square of this one. Um, likewise, you're going to have to do the square of this one time plus two times the square of this times this plus the square of this one, and then here the same thing here. We can combine these two. And to do doing the same thing, but it's going to be the same thing. So the square of this one minus two times this times this 
plus the square root of this one. And that just takes a while. But it turns out fine. Cool. So if you if this helped you out, just like the video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Um, and that does it for this video. Talk soon.